It's time for another episode of the History Behind the Headlines. Hey guys, how's it going? Well, here's an article about a map that was made almost 240 years ago. But before I get into the contents of the article, I want to provide some historical background that you won't find in the article regarding the American Revolution. So the map that's mentioned here was made right before the famous Battle of Yorktown, where George Washington's army, with the help of our French allies, delivered a decisive defeat to the British in Yorktown, the Virginia town nestled along the York River. As students of history know, the French joined the American cause for independence after the colonists proved that they could beat the greatest military power of that time. That, of course, happened in the Battle of Saratoga in New York in 1777. So now let's look at the map that's the focus of this story here. According to the Washington Post, the map was first produced in the summer of 1781 when George Washington was thinking about attacking the British forces stationed in New York. Now, the French had joined the American cause four years earlier, following the 1777 battle in Saratoga, New York, as I mentioned, and the French supplied troops and on uh, the ground and French engineers, and it was a French engineer who made this map. It was extremely valuable to General Washington because it recorded the locations of the British troops in New York. Once Washington looked at it, he decided New York was too well defended to attack it. So instead, the 49-year-old general planned an attack on the British troops in Yorktown, Virginia. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now, the historic French map is on display at George Washington's estate in Virginia, Mount Vernon. It's part of a larger collection of old maps and images that are said to be worth some $12 million. And the story includes a link to the digitized versions of the maps, which I'll include in the description below. The map contains some interesting details. Now, I should add that historians have often been interested in the maps of early America and specifically the maps made by George Washington himself. Of course, that's not the focus of this new story, but it is worth discussing in this video. And that's exactly what I'll do in the going deeper section that follows. The point is the French weren't the only map makers. For his part, George Washington began his career as a surveyor when he was only 16 years old. And there's a book published in 1932 titled George Washington Atlas, which is a collection of the maps George Washington created and used. Now, map making the 18th century lacked modern GPS technology, of course, but ancient maps were nonetheless critical to the future growth and economic success of the young nation. And it's been said, and rightly so, that during the American Revolution, a good map could mean the difference between victory and defeat. Stick around, there's more. The first president of the United States has had about a thousand biographies written about him. So when historian Bernd Schechter wrote about him, he decided to look at George Washington through his maps. And in 2010, he published his book, George Washington's America, a biography through his maps. It's based on maps which were found in Washington's home library upon his death in 1799. Schechter gave a public talk about his findings, and I want to briefly mention three very interesting facts about his talk. In it, he discusses a map created by Washington during his early military career in 1773-74. At that time, Washington had been given his first military assignment by the governor of Virginia during the French and Indian War. Now, as a quick aside, I have often mentioned to some of my students that the French and Indian War wasn't a war between the French and the Indians, of course. It was called that because the French and a few Indian tribes joined together to fight against the British-owned colonies and their Indian allies. So it's really a war about who's going to control North America, Britain or France. So Washington was supposed to deliver a message to the French from the British governor of Virginia 
which was going to say, in essence, to pack up your belongings and leave the Ohio Valley because the French presence there posed a real threat to the British rule of North America. Now, George Washington delivers the message, but the French send them back to Virginia with a message of their own. Essentially, we're not going anywhere. Washington returns to the governor with a diary of his notes and observations and a map of the area where he just returned from. Now, Washington wasn't required to create a map as part of his military duty, but he did so anyway. Why? Historian Beecher notes, because that's the way George Washington looked at the world. Maps were knowledge and knowledge was power, he said. And this was about power politics and the American frontier. The story doesn't end there, however. The governor distributes Washington's map, considered highly accurate even by modern standards, throughout London and elsewhere. According to Beckner, this was the beginning of Washington's fame. Now, the other noteworthy aspect of his talk is this map where he mentioned his book. It's the map called The Seat of War found in Washington's collection. It depicts the 1775 Battle of Bunker Hill, which the British uh, won, but not without losing many men in the battlefield. Bachelor highlights the fact that you could see Charleston's in flames with orange and yellow, all the for, uh, formations of man. And this was uh, June 17th, of course. And there you see Washington arriving in a column that's drawn. He says it's uh, uh, very beautifully. And he says uh, the point, the, the columns you see here are really just a congregation of citizen soldiers preparing to besiege the British. And there you can see the march of General Washington. And at the very front there, his Virginian horse, followed by his riflemen, the encampment. And he calls this an enchanting map, and rightly so. Now, the last thing I want to mention about this is the fact that the uh, historian noticed that a lot of these maps were printed in London. And as a historian, he wondered, how was it possible for Washington to get his hands on maps that often revealed the British position during the middle of the war? Well, it turns out that the French gave it to him. See, the war hadn't stopped the British map publishers and dealers from trading with the French, and the map business continued, even though the British were at war with the American colonies. The British sold maps to the French, and the French provided them to George Washington's men. Now, I'll include a link to Bechter's book in the description below and other useful resources. Well, guys, that's all I have for now. So thank you for watching. And if you'd like to know more, be sure to read the notes that I left in the description with some links for additional information. Also, feel free to comment. I do want to know what you think, any thoughts that you might have. I'm looking forward to learning from you as well. And if you have some questions, go ahead and leave it there. And also, uh, I'll have a new video soon. In the meantime, if you want to make your life more pleasurable, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And remember, the past is never dead. It isn't even past.